It's like one of the earlier versions here that looks like a notepad from Windows. <laughs> As you can see, it actually shows all the stages of booting. Hey guys, and welcome to Nomadic Dmitry channel. Today we're going to talk about Mac OS X. But today we're going to talk about the different version of Mac OS X. This one is called Puma. And actually have the startup menu right here. It's my iMac G4, which I actually recently attempted to install Mac OS X there, but there were some problems and uh, eventually I was able to install it. And by the way, here is the Mac OS 9. Yeah, I mean, it's so small. Uh, I mean, installed on this SD card. And I decided not to mix things up, I just decided to install Mac OS 9 on one SD card and the Mac OS 10 on another SD card. And I'm just using the converter from the ID to SD. So it's really, really simple to install operating systems and really easy. Here I have the Tiger installed. I installed two versions of Mac OS 10. I installed Tiger uh, and I installed Puma. You might ask, why Puma? Why I actually installed this version? Well, the reason for that is that basically I just had a CD with Puma. It, it was basically shipped with this computer. And the second reason is that I actually really wanted to try it because the Mac OS Tiger is quite polished and in Mac OS Tiger it's like already like very very Apple like operating system but Puma it was like a transition stage it was still like a transition stage from a next step to a Macintosh platform to Apple transitional kind of operating system as you can see it still has this happy Mac loading kind of uh, logo the booting process is like interesting so as you can see it actually shows all the stages of booting in the next versions of Mac OS 10 they actually removed like this kind of verbosity or like login the what's going on in the system okay here it is now we boot it into Mac OS 10 Puma it seems like it's all uh, like Mac Mac OS 10 and like not much difference but once we actually try to explore we see a bunch of differences for example the first thing I wanted to try is like change the stop background and if you right click here the only things you have is like new folder show info and help and basically there is no like change desktop background if you press show info it's gonna show you this so desktop information and here's the thing it says general information but it also has privileges so in the next versions of Mac OS 10 they actually like combine those together in one screen but but here's like all like different things and by the way the command box have you guys ever used the command box in Mac OS 10 I mean I don't know what's the point of that all right so let's actually press this menu item when you press here well it looks kind of similar to what we expect right but here it says get Mac OS 10 software uh, and then later versions of Mac of course it was uh, different it was like uh, update software or something okay when you press it it actually launches Internet Explorer I don't really have internet here but I was just curious what website actually leads to so it goes to apple.com but what page actually it goes to i'm not sure what page it actually goes to so let's close it but as you can see internet explorer was actually the browser that was shipped with mac os 10 of course later it was replaced by safari but this is just an interesting fact so let's actually go to the system preferences and hear what we see we see items right there which is like probably the most used items and then all those items and the icons here are quite interesting for example the mouse and the mouse actually here represents like the apple mouse from the early 2000s uh, the monitor it's probably like represents cinema display of apple uh, back in those days the classic of course yes it's very it was very important back then to emulate classic to be able to run mac os 9 applications but here i don't have Mac OS 9 so that's why it complains please install Mac OS 9 and here's the interesting thing those tabs actually uh, those tabs look like something from Mac OS 9 era of course those look more glancy but those tabs actually feel like something from the Mac OS 9 era some icons are really interesting and different for example login this icon is quite different yeah here it's, it's actually I actually like the design right here it's quite nice <laughs> To change your desktop background, you need to go to desktop. So you select the collection which you want to pick and then you select the background and it just like uh, sets the background. It's really easy. Talking about other stuff, for example, the iMovie is shipped with Mac OS 10.1. It's like one of the earlier versions here. It's quite interesting, it's actually shipped by default, you don't need to install anything here. Uh, and then of course Sherlock, and Sherlock is also available in uh, Tiger, I believe. Maybe some people back in those days actually used Sherlock, I don't know exactly, but to me it seems like it's not really something usable, but let me know guys if you actually used it back then. Talking about the Finder and everything related to file management, uh, by the way, I just noticed that it highlights the volume like that, it doesn't do this anymore, it's like highlighted, this keeps being highlighted, and then here, what 
we have so we have the computer icon right here by the way just take a look at the computer icon this one looks like g3 kind of mac from that era which is quite interesting <laughs> i like the favorites which is like this icon right here probably like the most used things that uh, you want to have in your mac and for example the favorites i think i don't have anything set in favorites yet, just except the documents applications and as usual like uh, mac os 10 applications right here by the way notice that adobe acrobat reader is installed right here which is like for me it was like whoa probably there was some deal with adobe pre-installed this in, on mac but i don't know so the clock and you can actually have the clock in your dock here for me it's kind of strange that you have it here at the same time it's quite interesting it just like sits here in your dock so yes here's a set of the default applications available on mac os 10.1 puma i already showed you imovie there's also internet connect this one you use to actually dial up to your internet provider the yeah, i didn't use it back then because the version i started using mac os 10 was 10.4 tiger by the way notice like all those aqua teams right it's just like how it blinks like highlights the specific um, button that you need to press and i actually like the aqua theme from the past it's like quite quite nice the text edit by the way notice in the text edit there is no additional options here it's just it looks like a notepad from windows <laughs> <laughs> to be honest talking about utilities when you open the utilities folder there are actually a few interesting things to notice here first thing i wanted to show you is the um, activity monitor and activity monitor is not called activity monitor it's called process viewer and when you open it well the icon yeah looks like activity monitor but still it looks much more simplified and i would say incomplete i don't really like the design here uh, maybe you guys like it but i personally don't really like it but at the same time it's quite simple but again it's not polished it feels like something is lacking but how do i actually terminate those processes do i need to right click no it doesn't seem to work statistics that's strange huh it just like shows you those but you cannot do anything with it but yeah so for squid you can just like um, manage those from here but not from the process viewer which is strange interesting thing here is the stuff it expander which was the tool that was used before mac os 10 like mac os 9 and before that to unpack the applications usually so you usually just you just launch it and then you select which file you want to unpack and it just unpacks it so this was really really useful and used a lot back then the next Next thing we want to check is a disk utility take a look at this it just it's nothing like the modern versions of the disk utility modern versions of disk utility i don't really like because it feels like those are lacking features but this one also feels really really incomplete kind of not something i would want to use by the way uh let's actually open something let's select this drive as you can see again it looks kind of like like something from the mac os 9 era which is quite interesting but like it feels really really different and let's go actually explore so when you press here it actually has a nice description of what first aid option is but again it feels something like incomplete here it feels like some design is lacking or something uh, again erase the volume format is just only those two there's nothing else but when you actually installed mac os 10.1 there is an option to format your drive in the unix file system which was quite interesting to me uh, i didn't try that but i think you can actually install mac os 10 like the earlier versions on the unix uh, file system drive which is really cool this feature of course was later removed <laughs> again partition select a single disk in order to set it up yeah you probably press here kind of similar to more modern versions but again with all the um, kind of ui from the earlier uh, aqua versions aqua is the graphical interface of mac os 10 probably not that bad but at the same time time the ui just feels like something is off here something like unfinished but again since i use the later versions maybe just the just the feeling what else we can explore the apple system profiler for example this one as usual just give you information about your mac system take a look at this it actually looks more like something from mac os 9 era again devices and volumes yeah i mean it totally looks like something from mac os 9 by the way i have a strange feeling that i actually like this kind of UI compared to the modern versions of Mac OS 10 because it's nice to have everything in tabs like that comparing like in the list of later versions possible to explore all those things yeah you can see the bundle name you can see all the frameworks that I used what kind of extensions do I have here yeah by the way notice the spinning wheel it just looks something quite different from the modern versions 
and here's like all the Kext files. Kext are like extensions, drivers for the Mac OS X and applications of course. This one feels like quite slow actually. It, yeah, comparing to Tiger it feels a bit slow. Probably it was not that optimized. So if you open about this Mac, it says that uh, it's a PowerPC G4. Actually it's not the latest version of Puma. I can upgrade a later version. But actually like this uh, about this Mac dial like here is like X is like looks cool but there is no button to expand and open system profiler you need to actually go ahead and open it separately which is quite interesting but yeah i actually like the finder and uh, all those icons up here the back button the the switches here yeah i mean at all it's not that bad actually let's actually go ahead and check how much space was used by puma on the disk drive so when you press right click show info it says 2 gb was used let's actually compare it to tiger so here it's 5 GB so like two times more it's just a default installation and I have not installed anything on those systems feels like yeah Puma actually used much less space compared to Tiger and of course we if we compare to modern versions of Mac OS 10 oh my gosh it's probably gonna be like hundreds of gigabytes I actually copied the Mac OS 9 files over here so I just wanted to use the classic environment to uh, launch the applications from Mac OS 9 era and I just need to finish setting this up but let's go ahead and go back to the utilities and uh, there's some utility I really wanted you to show and this one of course you guessed terminal and when you open the terminal what's interesting is it says welcome to Darwin and when you press you name RA it says Darwin kernel version and it also says power Macintosh power PC this is just like a really really old Darwin version but yeah you can still recognize it you can still use it and probably you can find some modern usages for that by the way I believe that Puma was the first version of Mac OS X that was shipped with iTunes by default. Here is how it looks like, really simple. And by the way, I really like this old version of iTunes because in this version it was all focused on music. The design was not that complicated like it became later on. Uh, you have the playlist, you have the tracks right here, you just copy those tracks. You can, I believe you can uh, rip the music using the iTunes so you can copy this from the CD to here and just like um, serve the purpose, that's it. Here it is guys it was a short overview of mac os 10.1 puma i just uh, really wanted to show you around this operating system and for me it's actually the first time i'm using this one so i have never used the puma and those versions like before tiger and nowadays you cannot even try those because it's a power pc platform or you need to emulate using like qemu emulator something like that if you want to try it go ahead and try it i'm probably gonna install some old software and just take a look how it works probably the better version to use here here, of course the tiger because it was more polished for that platform but still it's sometimes really nice to just uh, explore the earlier versions of mac os 10 because it was just interesting to see how the development actually went what problems they went through probably and what feedback from users they got and stuff like that so thank you guys for watching and see you later and by the way when we press shut down here notice this it just doesn't ask like do you want to shut down and stuff like that it just immediately goes and just shuts the computer down all right guys thank you and bye-bye.